Welcome back to Fast Monty's Garage. Today we're going to discuss string aligning your car to measure and adjust your toe settings. That can be front or rear depending on how new your car is. This is applicable to any car, any make, any model. Now if you're new to the channel, welcome. This is actually my fourth video in my alignment series where the first video was how to correct a bump steer in a 64 to 72 GMA body. If you don't have one of those cars, don't worry about it. You don't have to see that video. But this most important video was number two, where I showed off how to use this quick trick alignment tool to measure caster, camber, and toe. Yeah, really cool because you can do it at home. You can do it at the track. It, I love this product. And later I'll give you a discount code to get you 10% off. Now, video number three was me fixing my caster and camber, and that applies to any car that requires shims on the upper A-arm. So go check that out if that's your car. But now we're here because we have to do toe. The correct procedure for doing alignment is caster first, camber second, and then toe. Because every time you change the caster or camber, it changes the toe. So final setting is the toe. And this tool can measure toe, from side to side, from wheel to wheel, front wheel to the other front wheel, but it doesn't tell us which one might be further out than the other. So that's what string aligning is for. It'll give us an accurate um, starting point or reference point, I should say, to adjust our toe. So that being said, let's go hit the drawing board. I wanna show you what the plan is. All right, here's our GTO. Yeah, same stance, just fatter tires. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, string aligning. Here's a box we need to make. So you see these lines? These will be our strings as an example. So what we need to do, and the challenge here, and this is going to be tedious work because you have to do a lot of measuring, is setting up these lines along the car because they need to be perfectly parallel, typically right next to the wheel. So we'll say we'll set up a line here and a line here. They need to be parallel because we need to measure from that line to the wheel to determine if it's towed in or towed out and do our settings. So for example, if this is the front left wheel and we want it towed in, so I'm exaggerating, but towed in, we're gonna measure from that line, perpendicular from this line, to the outer edge of the wheel at the height of the center of the hub. And it'll make more sense when I show you on the car. And then we measure from the back of the wheel, perpendicular to the line, and we'll have two, basically two measurements. One should be longer than the other for toe in. And this, this difference is typically 1 16th to 3 16th of an inch, depending on uh, what your spec is for your car. And this is applicable to the rear wheel as well if you have adjustable toe on your rear wheels, we're gonna measure from that line perpendicularly. Now, so that's, that's the goal. Now the challenge is how do we set up these lines? So as you notice, I have fishing line, yellow fishing line, so I can see it, I'm almost blind. So I'm gonna use this line as our string. And my challenge is since the car's on the lift, I'd like to keep it on the lift with the string on the lift. So that's a, a unique challenge that I have, but I'll show you some guidance for if you're doing this on the ground. Um, but before we do that, we need to go set up the car to get ready to do this because we need freedom of movement in these tires. Okay, number one thing we have to do is figure out a way where we can easily uh, pivot the wheels, especially when we're adjusting our tie rod ends. We don't want the tie rod ends to bind because the tire is not allowing it to swivel. So Quick Trick came up with these killer Rotating plates are called toe plates or swivel plates or bearing plates. I use this in episode two of our series where I did the whole setup. These are actually roll on. You can drive onto these. You don't have to pick the car up and put them underneath the tire. They're super robust, they're steel, they're ball bearing loaded. And here's why. So the suspension is fully loaded. I mean, the weight of the car, front of the car is on these two plates, there's one on each side. I can. I can pivot the tire, look. How cool is that? I mean, what, a, what an awesome invention. I love it. So get yourself some if you can. Um, but anyway, so sorry to get so excited about that. Plan B, if you guys don't want to get swivel plates and you're on a perfectly flat surface like a garage floor, um, you can get 
um, like uh, glad trash bags. Like roll onto them or pick up the car. If you pick up the car and put the bags underneath, you have to make sure your suspension is fully loaded so you get an accurate tow reading. So I'd recommend just driving onto them. That'll give you a little bit more uh, freedom of movement besides bare concrete, but this is by far the best method. Next step here is those of you guys with older cars where you can take your steering wheel off or it could, and you can rotate it and put it back on. Don't look at your steering wheel if it's straight or not. I want you to look at your pitman arm. So this is your pitman arm off your steering box. Make sure that's perfectly straight. Now, those of you that have, do not have a pitman arm, maybe you have a, a rack or something, give some guidance below for those of you that have classic cars to uh, determine where dead center is. So this is for those of us that have pitman arms. So make sure you're dead center. And now we'll jump in, I'll show you how to lock the steering wheel. All right, my pitman arm is perfectly centered. Hopefully yours is too, or your rack or whatever. If you have a new car, center your steering wheel because you don't have that option that the old cars have. Now we have to lock our steering wheel in place because we don't want to change the toe and then realize that our steering wheel was moving the whole time. Yeah, that'll, that'll whack up all your dimensions. So get this tool from Quick Trick. It's a steering wheel lock. It's really cool. So the standard one comes with these uh, steel arms, which works on a padded steering wheel. If you have a wood steering wheel like mine or the old school hard plastic ones, it's not gonna work. You need to coat these little arms with some kind of rubber. So I put some three quarter inch tubing on and it works great. All you do is push up against the steering wheel with the fingers and push down on the seat. Just like that, the steering wheel's locked. To let it go, bam. So stay tuned for that discount code. You're gonna want this product. Now that your steering wheel's locked in place and you have a solution to pivot your tires, we now need to start stringing. So I have a string set up, it's tough to see. It's yellow uh, fishing line, so I can see it. I didn't wanna use clear, cause I'm blind as a bat. So I ran it from the back of the vehicle to the front. Now, depending on what kind of car you have and your track width from front to rear, you might need to do a full square box around the car. And I'll show you both methods in one second on paper, cause it makes more sense. But what you wanna target is right in the middle of the wheel. So there's the back, it's perfectly centered, and there's the front, perfectly centered. Now let's hit the drawing board. I need to show you the dimensions I'm talking about. Here's a better example than that Pro Mod GTO model. So here's our lines and our tires. And I was talking about track width here. So most cars are identical track width, the, this, the distance from the outside of the wheel, outside of the wheel on front and back, are probably gonna be the same. If you have a classic car and you have the same wheels, front and rear, same tires, you can use one string at a time. So you line up your string, you measure the distance here between the string and a point on the wheel, and I'll show you a point on my wheel that I'm using, and over here on this wheel. Those measurements need to be the same. So you, that means this string is perfectly parallel between those two wheels. Now, if you're in a situation like me, or you either have staggered wheels or you have aftermarket spindles that changed this width, you have to use the parallel string approach. And this is more tedious, but this is how it has to be done. So in my example here, these two strings are the same length and I'm starting at the rear. So I'm gonna take a measurement between these two mounting points of the string. If you're doing this on the ground, you can use jack stands. But this measurement here, let's call it 77 inches because that's what I measured, needs to be the same as the front, which will be 77 inches. So same measurement front and rear, and same measurements on the rear here, as here. So these two measurements need to be the same. These two measurements need to be the same. And then these two measurements need to be the same. So there's going to be a lot of going back and forth and readjusting strings, moving the strings, but most importantly, write down your measurements. So I already know this is five inches on both sides. And I measured 77 here. And this happens to be four and a half inches on both sides. 
Yes, I have wider hubs on my front disc because of the way my custom discs and uh, spindles are made. So on a stock car, stock GTO, this is probably the same. So leave a comment below whatever car you're working on and what you found. If they are uh, identical track widths, let people know. So let's jump back to the car and show you what uh, measuring points to pick up from. So I made a comment about writing down your measurements of how your distance from string to string, especially if you're using jack stands, because if you're getting under your car to change uh, your toe and you accidentally hit the string or the jack stands, you need to know where you started from. So that's why I said that. But check this out. What I found uh, for my situation on the lift, I found these towel rods on Amazon and they're magnet. That's what these are. So there are four of them. I set them up and then I'm repurposing the digital scale that came with the quick trick system, putting it on to make sure I'm vertical. Make sure you're at 90 and what's at 90, it beeps at you. All right, you saw earlier that the string is actually dead center with the wheel hub. You need to find a spot that's reliable to measure from. It can be a lug nut. I'd prefer it. You pick a spot like somewhere that's vertically in line with the center of the wheel so you can pick a machine surface. I actually just went off right dead center and took my measurement like that. So side to side on both front and rear. Now that we got to that point, we have to now measure the distance from the edge of the wheel to the string. And you need to try and be right dead center. And that's why this string is so handy. Take a measurement front. And I like to use these steel rulers that have these lines and you line up the line, make them, make them parallel. That's how you know you're 90 degrees. So this is three and almost seven eighths on the front. And the rear is four and five sixteenths. Let's go write those down. All right, boys and girls, it's time for some math and geometry. This is why you need to stay in school, kids. <laughs> I know this looks scary. It will make more sense after I explain it. So be patient here. Here's our fishing line, this top line here. The parallel line you see is the hypothetical center or perfectly straight if the wheel we're looking down straight down on the wheel. Now we took two measurements, three and seven eighths in the front, four and five sixteenths in the back. We subtract the two, we find the difference at seven sixteenths. We take half of that and that's the toe right here. So seven thirty seconds here, towed out. Now our goal, that's way too much, right? I need towed in. This is my spec, it's one thirty second of an inch is this dimension right here. That's towed in by 1 seconds of an inch. You guys might have a different spec, so you have to look it up for your car or your application. It could be different, so look it up. Uh, this 3 seconds number is total, so if I'm measuring from wheel to wheel, like with the quick trick tool. Now, our target is actually 1 16th of an inch difference between this measurement and this measurement, because we have 1 32nd here, and we have 1 32nd here. Those numbers need to be uh, are going to be the same. So when you measure the difference, it's the total. So this number needs to be 1 16th of an inch larger than this number. So this is where the fun begins with our adjusting and measuring. Let's jump under the car. I'll show you what uh, my tie rods look like. And if yours look different and you need to give some coaching to others, leave a comment below to tell them what make and model car you have and what you had to do to adjust that tie rod length. So here's my adjustable tie rod. There are two lock nuts on each end. And what you need to be uh, aware of, there, one's right thread, right hand thread, and the other one's left hand thread. So make sure you look at the threads before you try to take the nut, loosen that nut. You probably have to use some uh, liquid wrench or something in there to, to uh, get those loose. Mine are quite stubborn. But now I can turn it and you can see right here it's growing, so I'm going the wrong way. I need to turn this way. And you can see it getting closer and make some more measurements. So I'm gonna keep doing that back and forth, back and forth until we get that 1 16th of an inch difference. Let's do the back of the wheel first. Now we're at 3 and 15 16ths. Let's do the front and the front 
is four on the nose. That means we're one sixteenth inch long, longer, meaning one thirty second of an inch toe in. That's the target. Yes, now I get to do the other side. A few things to mention before we wrap it up. One is I was using a empirical ruler today, and if you're anything like me, I can sometimes get overwhelmed by using fractions too much, adding, dividing, multiplying, splitting, whatever. So a way to streamline that is to get a metric ruler and do it in millimeters. <laughs> it's a lot easier, so keep that in mind. Number two, I did not forget, quicktrickalignment.com. The discount code to use is QT Monty, right there. QT Monty gets you 10% off. I really love their products. These swivel plates came in handy. The steering wheel lock. If you ever want to do your own home alignment and measure your caster and camber, get the full kit. The link for that video is right there. But I love their stuff. And speaking of loving stuff, several of you wanted hats made, so I finally have hats made. So there's a hat link below, three different colors. Go check that out when you can. But until next time, you guys know the drill. Build them fast and drive them faster. See ya.